welcome to the program, Sadhviji. It is so amazing to have you. And I know you have taken time out from a very, very busy schedule, especially today on International Yoga Day. Um, my uh, first question to you, because we're thinking of the future, you know, yoga has done so much during these times and I can't hear you. I think you're still muted. Okay. So for me, um, the first question would be to think of a new future, to think of a new normal, because I heard you say that for the first time and amongst all that noise, you were the first one who spoke about a new normal. And I think that trended very much on um, a Twitter and Facebook later on. What do you see as the new future in practical terms? Because, and just to give you a background, you're talking here to a university, which is one of India's biggest universities, who's hosting this program, which is from Kanpur. And Dudarshan is taking this out to the entire country. So people be watching and wondering just what is in store for them in the future and what role yoga could have to play in there. Wonderful. So what's in store for the future is whatever we create. Our destiny, when we speak about, for example, the law of karma, we know that our destiny, our future, is what we are creating. The choices we make today, the decisions we make today, they literally are that which is creating the world we will live in tomorrow, both our own internal world as well as the outer world. Mm -hmm. And so as we've been speaking about the new normal, Really what that has meant to me from the beginning and where I started speaking about it is that I started hearing so many people from three, four days into the lockdown saying, oh, I can't wait to get back to normal. Can't wait until, you know, the doors open, the stores open, we can shop again, go to the movies again. And as things stayed closed and as we watched mother earth heal here on the banks of ganga we've watched the waters of ganga are so clear and so beautiful puja swamiji is saying it's like they're flowing in the time of satya yug we've watched our air get so clean that which all of our programs and campaigns couldn't do, a virus has done. By locking us up inside, Mother Earth is healing. Everything is healing. And so as I heard everybody saying, God, can't wait to get back to normal, we realized, wait, it was the normal that actually has created this situation. The way that we were living has actually got us exactly where we are now. So for example, ways of eating. If everyone were vegetarians, we wouldn't have a COVID pandemic right now. All of the viruses have come to us from animals. Talk about bird flu, pig flu, COVID. These are all viruses that have crossed from animals into humans through us eating the animals. So one little aspect of just what our diets are like, what our lifestyles are like, actually is the root cause for the fact that we now have COVID in humans. But then you take it a step further and you say, well, all right, so we have it in humans. Why are we stuck in the situations we are? Well, we're stuck because so many of our countries have spent so much time and energy, resources on weapons. I'm originally from America, and I know that the United States has spent so much money on a nuclear arsenal that could blow up our entire earth, God knows how many hundreds of times. We only have one earth to begin with. So 
you know, whether we can blow it up 30 times and you can blow it up 40 times is sort of a moot point because there only is one. But we've spent all one. time and energy and resource on weapons, on missiles. And so we're now in a very tragically interesting situation where we have missiles, but we have no masks. We have guns, but we have no gloves. And the war of today is a war in which all the missiles and all the guns aren't going to help us. We need masks. We need gloves. And to realize that that normal that we were in created a situation where we are nuclear powers, but we don't have enough ventilators. And so why would we want to go back to a normal where, as Mahatma Gandhi said so beautifully, we're running so fast, but we're running in the wrong direction. Direction. Continuing to just amass more and more nuclear weapons in places where we've already got enough to blow up the world hundreds of times is a giant leap in the wrong direction. And so we don't want to go back to that normal. The normal that we were living in was a normal in which success was based on how much we can buy. Development was based on how many factories we have that spew their waste into the air, into the soil, into the groundwater, into our rivers. Why do we want to go back to a normal that it took a virus to help Mother Earth heal a little bit? Why not move forward into a new normal in which we recognize that providing people with health care is just as important as having missiles and guns to protect our borders? Because to protect our borders, if people inside our borders are dying, isn't the security that we need. It's not the safety that we need. Yes, we have to be protected at the border, but we also have to be able to ensure the health and the safety and the security of those who are already inside our borders. Yes, we want development, of course. Yes, we need to open our economy, of course, but we need to put the eco back in economy. The problem is yeah. that we have forgotten that the first part of economy is eco. And so our economy exactly. has become that, which is at loggerheads with Mother Earth. We've, we've gotten accustomed to a normal in which you have to choose between doing well and doing good. New normal should be something in which we have an economy, we have a system in which you can do well and do good at the same time. A system in which you can do well and be well, be healthy at the same time. A system in which we can be well and Mother Earth can be well at the same that, time, you don't have that, to choose between that, our well and Mother Earth's wellness or health. And so that's, that's the, the new normal that we've been, been talking about. And that's why it's so important because otherwise, yes, eventually we'll come up with a vaccine for COVID, but it'll just be something else tomorrow. It'll be a superbug. It'll be another virus. It'll be a bacteria. It'll be climate change. It'll be lack of water. Do you know that by 2030, India is only going to have 50% of the drinking water we need? 2030. That's basically tomorrow. The world is going to be there by 2040. So the new normal needs to be one that brings the eco back into economy 
that enables us to realize that development and success is not about just how much can we produce in factories, but rather how deeply connected can we be to Mother Earth and Mother Nature? And, and, and to each other, because I, the new normal that you're talking about and that you have so well described with all its aspects, I would say you could still go on for hours if you wanted to, because there's so much to say about that. But how do you see the role of yoga in this new normal and part of the Indian Yoga Association, this coming together of all these yoga associations. It's very interesting. The role of yoga is essential. Yoga is that which unites. Yoga is union. And so, as long as I feel less than, empty, miserable, alone, separate, in order to feel whole and full, I need to buy more. I need to eat more. I need to drink more. I need to consume more in this illusory idea that somehow buying more, eating more, drinking more, owning more will make me feel more. Yoga connects us with the fullness of ourself, with the truth, with the wholeness, with the divine connection, with the infinite reality. If I am one with the infinite, I'm never alone. I'm never less. There's nothing to be obtained or acquired. There's no sense of depression or anxiety. Yoga is that which actually gives us not just health in the body. Most of us think about yoga just as that which brings health in the body, but it's actually that which brings the stillness, the calmness, the connection in the mind, the peace in the mind, and that love, that oneness, that union in our hearts and in our spirits. And yoga is rooted in the yamas and the niyamas. And the yamas and the niyamas are that which actually give us the the Ten Commandments, the toolbox for how to live in the world. If we literally only took the first few, I've been saying this so much in the last few days, if we literally only took the first few of the yamas, even if we never moved into niyama, even if we never moved into asana or pranayama, if we never moved all the way through the eight limbs, but we simply adopted Ahimsa, Satya, Asteya, Apigraha, even if we didn't touch Brahmacharya yet, just for those first four of the Yamas, we actually could treat and heal and solve everything that afflicts us in the world today from war and crime and violence to hunger to poverty to environmental destruction. And so yoga is the key. Yoga is the answer That's to that true. which is happening in the world, that which is happening to Mother Earth, and for ourselves, because of course we don't end with apigraha. We move into brahmacharya, we move into the niyamas, we move all the way up into samadhi mm -hmm. that gives us that, that bliss, that ultimate oneness in which there is no depression, there's no stress, because there is no separation. There is no separation. There is just <laughs> divine oneness. I think that says it absolutely all. And I think we may have wanted to call the program Yoga is the Key, 
uh, which we probably will for the next one. So <laughs> thank you so much. It was absolutely amazing. You said it so well. I thank you once again for joining this amazing program and I hope that the young ones will be more than inspired by what you said. Thank you, Sadhviji. Thank you so of much for your time. Of course. And just lastly, the Indian Yoga Association. I'm so impressed by them, so full of joy to be a member. It's come together to bring all of the threads and the streams of our Indian culture of yoga together. Because sadly, these days, what we're seeing is that the associations from the West had kind of gotten a bit of a monopoly on certification and whatnot in order to be a yoga teacher. And the Indian Yoga Alliance came together and said, hey, wait, this isn't about 200 hours or 300 hours or 500 hours. Yoga is who you are. Yoga is how you live. Yoga is what we are steeped in from our culture, our scriptures. And so they've brought the lineages of yoga in India together. And it's such a joy to see how far they've come in just a few years, how far we've come in just a few years. And I'm so, so impressed and so proud of the whole Indian Yoga Association team and family. Thank you so much. That's 